I am the Orpheum Office Associate and also the 2016 Festival Coordinator. So I'd like to welcome you all here to our fashion show and I hope you all enjoy it. And I'm going to bring Nancy Adams to the podium to talk a little bit about um, today. Thank you. 
would be articulated for you so you'll know who is who. Um, Gloria and her family are, are distant relatives of the, of the Seabird uh, line and have been enthusiastic about learning more about uh, their relations. And they traveled a great distance to be here. And Gloria looks pretty cute in the dress that she's wearing. So uh, just wanted to put that out there. And I think lastly, I would invite you to um, clearly enjoy the show. Uh, Dr. Sanders has graciously agreed to moderate or, or do, a, do a little Q&A afterwards if you have questions about uh, the fashion or the process. And um, I'm going to sit down and enjoy the show. Thank you. stage at age 18 and became an international star. Her influence was not only movies, art, and music, but also fashion. Many liken her to other fashion icons, such as Marilyn Monroe and Audrey Hepburn. However, she also used her celebrity for social causes. Today, you still see Jean's influence on fashion, as Nancy mentioned. The t-shirt still is alive and well. Jean also loved hats and headwear, stripes. Playful clothing, but also classic line. Sophisticated attitude. Classic looks that we even see emulated in models today and designers. This is one of my favorite images. You even see the influence in fashion today. This I pulled up yesterday, and it's called the Seabird Denim Blouse. Again, classic lines, throwback to the 60s. Actually, it's sold out, too. It's not even available anymore. The trench coat. Kenneth Cole. Um, had created a trench coat, and that whole theme that you see in many of her images has been found and emulated throughout fashion. There's even um, a site from uh, Mod Cloth, which is a apparel company, that they have a blog that you can look at, and it talks about the five ways to get the GC book book. So our design process. As Nancy mentioned, uh, she emailed me. I emailed back. I said, sure, I'll come now. And uh, we took a little bit of arranging with my schedule to get over here, but 
that out, and I did. And I was um, immediately just enthralled in um, the images, the story, and then the passion around this whole festival. So, in September, brought the students down, loaded up in a couple Iowa State, well, Iowa State van, and drove over. And Nancy spoke with the students, gave us a tour of the facilities, and insight into Gene's life. During that time, many of the images that you see here were arranged around the room, in this room, and students took photos, did some sketches, took some notes to get some ideas on how they would pursue their design. So, we, the students and faculty in the Pearl Merchandising and Design Program at Iowa State University, Thank you for including us in the 2016 Gene Siebert Festival of the Arts. Special thanks again to Nancy Adams, who initially contacted me and whose passion about this event was infectious and drew me in immediately. To quote Nancy's initial email message to me, <laughs> she said, oh. <laughs> it was a good, it was a good, um, Quote here. Her style, speaking of Jean, and influence are regularly in referenced in U.S. publications such as Glamour, Harper's Bazaar, Marie Claire, etc. She has been cited as an influence by Emma Watson, Carrie Mulligan, Lena Dunham, and other contemporary public figures, and fashion designers from Kenneth Cole to the team of Rodarte that have cited her ethnicity. So how could I not say yes? I would also like to extend a thanks to Bob Unted, Orpheum Theater Center Director, Tammy Losing, the Orpheum Theater Associate, and Linda Moore, the volunteer, who also helped with all of this. And then a big thanks to Andrew upstairs, who has dealt with many, many requests today as we've been preparing and practicing. So thank you, Andrew. So, let's have a fashion show. <laughs> Our first designer is Alicia Stanley. Alicia states, I was intrigued by styles of sweaters worn by Jean Seaver. My goal was to create a garment that embodied the elements observed in her casual garments. Oversized, comfortable, and sophisticated. I used a mixture of traditional and experimental pattern making methods to construct and create a dress with an oversized silhouette. Cream lace, chocolate souffle, and chocolate velveteen were fabrics of choice for this design, as I felt this combination was representational, representational of a classy lady. I really wanted to bring that yellow outfit to life. 
I assume this photo was taken sometime in the 1960s, which gave me the idea to make this garment more geometrical in shape, being that in the mod era. I decided to create a mid-length pencil skirt with matching high-low top. The embellishments on the top in the original photo really made the outfit sophisticated. So I had to add that to my adaptation in this look. The yellow color of the garment, Jean wore in the photograph, really grabbed my attention. I think yellow was her color. Her story and legacy made me think of the color yellow, and I really wanted to bring her vibrancy back to this design. Jean Seabrook wore. 
I found two photos of Jean in two styles of dresses. One dress is a mid-length black and has a fitted halter bodice with a super front bow. The other dress is a blue polka dot with fitted bodice and spaghetti straps. I love the classic look of both of these and wanted to combine the looks in a classic, beautiful way. I decided to create a dress made of red and black polka dot cotton fabric to bring out the polka dot aesthetic of the blue dress. I wanted to embrace Jean's classic beauty in my overall design of the garment. She influenced so many people and accomplished so many things in her lifetime. But I felt it was important to adding a pop of color to the garment. I was pleased to create a striped look in the print, which is also Parisian inspired. I wanted my garment to embody the beauty of Jean, while also showing her whimsical side. My garment was the classic 1960s silhouette that was started in the 1950s with the Dior's new look. When I design, I like to take inspiration from the past and present. My goal with the garment was to embody the spirit of Jean Seaver while also expressing my own personal style. I would now like to introduce our models. Our first model, Danielle Kohler. Thank 
here in our program. Ashley Williams.
And so I wanted to do something with tweed, but I didn't want to do something super heavy. So I printed the tweed on linen. And the design that Courtney is wearing, the Argyle, is another one of my designs. So I did that one by hand with Prismacolor markers and scanned it into the computer and digitally printed it on silk habitat. And just to follow up on So in Iowa State, we have the Digital Apparel and Textile Studio, and in this studio, we have a digital textile printer and a laser cutter and an embroidery machine. And we actually have with us today the two people who basically run the lab and are my bosses. So I will let them talk about that. I guess I could you on the spot, sorry. Hi, everyone. Um, so happy to be here today. Um, we do have a lot of fun at a digital textile. <laughs> Um, printing lab. Um, every every week we get to print and work with students who either want to laser cut, embroider, or um, work on printing on fabric. And so we help guide them on you know what fabric to choose, how to upload their designs, um, what do they want to make, what material do you want to use. Um, and it's just a really fun way for students to embrace their creativity in their projects. So. Um, unlimited access for faculty and students into that lab. Um, we highly encourage it, and um, like I said, it just brings out a whole new world of creativity for our students. Yeah, what she said. <laughs> <laughs> and also, what we also have in our, uh, one of the classes we offer is digital printing, so students are actually now required when they come in if they pick the design option uh, to learn how to do digital printing, so everyone going to Iowa State will have that background and if you go to our fashion show in April you'll see lots of digital printing there's actually a category for digital printing and it's one of our biggest ones so we have about like 50 garments that are digitally printed each year in the show thank you any other questions for those who did not take advantage of the digital um, printing class, what were your sources of, um, of fabric? Because I saw and I know the limitations. So I used a Kremlin. Uh, this is usually used under wedding dresses. Uh, it's a very stiff fabric, so if uh, the wearer were to wear it for a long term, I'd probably have her wear like a silk um, under dress. Yeah, cool. Same thing. Same thing for all. Before the, before this, did any of you have a knowledge of Jane Seaver? After this, uh, do you think, even though she's been gone for a while, she might still be relevant? And uh, what are your, feel your feelings about feminists? Wonderful question. Ms. Nancy and she gave us everything. 
Okay. So we are knowledgeable about GNC right now. But um, I think um, the, the part of her life, of her as a social activist, I think that still resonates today. Um, that, that shows people in celebrity-like positions can have a political message or uh, have a social message. One question. Do you think there's, unlike a lot of actresses that are cast in their time period, do you think there's maybe a timelessness to her look and her style oh, that is yeah. more so? Yeah. <laughs> if, um, you know, whenever you think of this time period, we always kind of hear about Marilyn Monroe. Mm -hmm. And I think she was just like, she was like that. And I think she's an egg girl, too, of that time period. It's very classic and, and chic. About the relatives, the relatives. What's that story? <laughs> well, my dad is very interested. My dad's right over there, by the way. He is very interested in genealogy, and so he's put in a lot of time um, getting to know what our genealogy, where we came from exactly. And so we're uh, cousins of genes once removed. Uh, that's about as much as I can tell you. Um, but he, he knows a lot more, and you can see our genealogy uh, up in the room upstairs. I think it's called the Black Room or the Black Book? It's the Learning Studio, and there's Black Books. Black Books. Yep, right. We've got the Black Blacks, Black Books. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, I mean, my dad's mentioned it throughout, I think, like my teenagehood that, that we were related to her, and I think that she's definitely inspired me as far as fashion. I mean, she's got, she's got a very uh, large amount of different looks and different styles that she has, and that resonates with me, as well as the very minimalistic looks that she has that I think could be worn forever, you know? These, these very simple, but elegant and just timeless looks, gorgeous. But yeah, she's, she definitely inspired me in that, and I've seen a few of her films, and I think they're amazing. Um, so, yeah. I hope that answers your question. Any other questions? Comments? I'm going to say thank you very much. For Again, thank you for allowing us to be a part of the festival this year. And thank you, all of you. I know that you've worked very, very hard on this, and we really appreciate your participation. So, thank you. Please, please be sure to, um, to check out the Upstairs Learning Studios, because there is so much memorabilia that even though it looks like we've got a long break before the next film, you'll get lost up there in, in what there is if, if you want to see things about Jean and learn more about her. So that's just on the second floor. And then you also have the opportunity now, if you'd like, because it's such a beautiful November day, to take to grab one of those maps, take a tour about in this, take a tour to the sites uh, in Marshalltown that interest you, that influence Jean. Um, grab a bite to eat, and then at 6 o'clock we have the next film. Okay. Who would have Thanks. thought there'd be something better than college football? <laughs> <laughs>